Hey, welcome back everyone on your daily update on the tropics. Today we'll be focusing exclusively on now Hurricane Ian. Now we talked about this yesterday. We talked about that Ian would undergo a period of intensification overnight and the satellite image would look more impressive this morning. And you can see that did in fact unfold overnight. You can see a very impressive satellite image indicative of not only a hurricane, but a hurricane that's uh, more than likely going to continue to intensify over the next couple of days as it moves off to the north. So speaking of the track, let's look at the cone. Now we've got a lot to unpack here, so bear with me. Couple of things to note here. First and foremost, we talked about yesterday how Ian, the wind field would expand. And that's what you see here in this, this uh, orange area here. You can see it's starting to grow, get bigger as anticipated. In terms of the, the motion, it's gonna move off to the north-northwest, moving over the western tip of Cuba, which is under a hurricane warning, that's the red area, then turn more to the north and ultimately to the north-northeast and approach the Florida Peninsula on the day Wednesday. A couple other things to note here. Note the addition of watches, watches for the western portions of the Florida Peninsula, tropical storm watches in yellow, tropical storm warning for the Keys in blue, and most importantly, the hurricane watch is now in effect for portions of the western coast of Florida. That is the pink area denoted in here. The other thing on this map, the letter M, means we're forecasting Ian to strengthen, potentially becoming a major hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. Now let's start breaking down the timing. This is the timing or when conditions would spread over your community. So looking here in the lower keys in southwestern uh, Florida, that is Tuesday evening is when conditions would start to spread over that area. So you need to have your preparations finished Tuesday morning Tuesday noon at the latest. Then those conditions spreading northward and reaching Tampa Bay area by sunrise Wednesday. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area getting prepared, you need to have your preparations done by tomorrow night. Then moving off towards uh, the southeast and potentially spreading into Georgia and South Carolina, but we'll, we'll refine that forecast in a later stream. Today I really wanna focus on helping the residents of Florida make that last final push to get ready. In terms of damaging wind potential, so remember we talked about the cone just shows where the center, the center could go. It doesn't denote the hazards. This graphic is a better representation of where the damaging wind potential could be. And you can see the highest damaging wind potential on the west coast of Florida, hence the watches that I just showed you a second ago, and most especially the hurricane watch for west central Florida. If we look at the rainfall potential, this is the chance of flooding over the next three days. We're, we're, it, it's probably gonna go up here in North Florida, but we'll get to that later. For now, look at this large area of risk for flooding. So this is, this is important. This is not storm surge, this is rainfall flooding, traditional rainfall flooding that will come and, and make movement difficult. So this is why you can't be waiting to the last minute to, to move around or make your preparations because rain will begin to spread over the area as the storm approaches. But I think the most important thing to talk about today, and this is a, a new graphic, so I'm gonna help you get used to it. This is the potential storm surge, the potential for storm surge to occur. And these colors are obviously denoting the brighter the color, the, the higher the potential for storm surge. The yellow areas here, orange and red. So let's break it down. The potential for up to two to four feet of inundation. Okay, so that's, that's up to here on me. Uh, down here in the Florida Keys, three to five southwest Florida, four to seven here around Bonita Beach and Charlotte Harbor, five to eight from Inglewood to the middle of Longboat Key, and most importantly, Tampa Bay has a lot of potential for a significant storm surge. Now, why the range? Why this big range of five to 10 feet? Because if, if the center stays a little bit offshore, maybe closer to five, but we have to prepare you, and you have to prepare for, if the center comes just a little bit east right here and puts that strongest wind, that strongest onshore flow right into the bay, then we could get a 10-foot storm surge. Now, if you're not familiar with what a 10-foot storm surge looks like, I stand six feet tall. So four feet over the top of my head to give you a sense 
of how much storm surge potential exists. And it is because of the storm surge that evacuations are generally ordered. Now, some of, we've been talking about this all week, to know your letter, know your zones. So you're gonna see people start to call evacuations today and tomorrow. They'll do so by letters. If you need to look up whether you're in an evacuation order, you can go to floridadisaster.org slash info. And there are two links here. There are evacuation zones where you can look up what your zone you're in in existing evacuation orders to see if you're under an evacuation. Now finally, I wanna end on this. Unless you're behind me in this building, you're not a hurricane expert. And if emergency managers order you to leave, then you need to do so without question and without delay. These, these emergency managers and local officials are experts in their respective fields, and you really need to listen to them and listen to the important safety information that they are providing you. So that is it from the National Hurricane Center. We'll be right back with you with another update uh, as needed or tomorrow at the same time.